In this video, you will learn why we need programming languages, and I will shortly explain the use of the five most popular ones you hear everywhere. If you watch this video until the end, I will give you a set of questions you can ask in every project to understand the choice of technologies better. I'm Leonard, Engineering Manager at Klarna, and with this video, I help you to understand the engineers you're working with better, increase your productivity, and the overall impact you can have on your product. Let's shortly define what a programming language actually is. Computers are incredibly complex machines that can take an input and produce an output. They, for example, take a mouse or keyboard input and will display something on the screen as the output. Programming languages are used to be able to tell the computer what to do with such inputs and how the result will be created. Those languages are defined by two things. The syntax, how they are structured, and the semantics, what the written code means. Syntax defines how the language is structured, similar to the languages used to communicate between humans. Grammar, symbols used, and how sentences are formed. Semantics define what the computer should do, the instructions, and how the individual elements are interpreted. But that doesn't answer why we need programming languages, and especially not why we need so many different ones. To answer this question, let's start with a computer. The often heard joke, it's just ones and zeros, is actually true. The computer just understands binary because there are only two possible states, on or off. This is because the brain of the computer is built out of billions of tiny switches indicating a complex state. If you are now wondering how these simple mechanisms can power complex applications like Google Maps, video games, or help to fly rockets, you're not alone. Even after studying computer science and years of programming, this still blows my mind. If you are not a character from the movie Matrix, reading and writing ones and zeros is usually very difficult. This is why we need programming languages. Every programming language is invented to make programming easier and more efficient for us humans. Ones and zeros are machine language. Programming languages that are very close to raw machine instructions we call low-level programming languages, such as assembly. These low-level languages are still very hard to read and write fluently. So we invented high-level languages, such as JavaScript, Python, Java, c -sharp, C, and C++. High-level languages are much easier to read and write because they use very simple syntax and easily understandable semantics. They even use simple English words like if, else, do, function, class, or object, much closer to humanly used languages. The only disadvantage is that before we can actually make the computer do what we wrote in a high-level language, we need to translate it into machine code. This can make a program less efficient and we lose a bit of control over the actual hardware. But luckily, only in very specific cases, this performance and control are necessary. So for most cases, high-level languages are very useful and help to create software much faster. That was enough about the general purpose of modern programming languages. Let's now talk about the five most used languages and explain their common use cases. This will give you an understanding of why we need different high-level languages. Let's start with one of the most popular ones, JavaScript. JavaScript won the competition as one of the most popular languages because it is very simple and versatile. It is also the only programming language that we can use to program websites and web applications running in a browser which makes it the front-end programming language. But it can also be used as a back-end language and for scalable data architectures. If you want to know more about the front-end and the back-end, I made a recent video explaining those terms and why JavaScript is so popular. Let's now talk about Python. Python is one of the most popular programming languages due to its focus on simplicity and making it easy to get started. Python, like JavaScript, has a massive community around it, which makes it easy to find answers to common problems. For most problems, there are already libraries available that solve them. Libraries are just already created and packaged code that we can use to solve common problems. There are also many popular libraries available that make Python one of the top choices for backend web development. Python has found its way into the data science community because it was the language used by scientists analyzing large data sets. It serves many data processing and machine learning use cases. Let's now talk about Java. It must be connected to JavaScript like the name suggests, right? 
Unfortunately, we engineers are pretty bad at naming things. And despite both being programming languages, they are not the same. They differ in syntax, semantics, and even the concepts used to develop software are different in both. JavaScript was named similarly in a very bad attempt to benefit from the popularity of Java at this time. But it has only caused confusion for everyone since then. Java is one of the most popular languages, especially for larger business applications. Java was developed as a language that could produce software that could run on any platform independently. Coming now to C-Sharp. C-Sharp was developed by Microsoft for Microsoft initially, but it has evolved to become a very versatile language that is very popular and widely used. Also a more general programming language, it is used to develop enterprise-grade backend systems and video games or services for web applications. It has a very similar syntax to Java. One advantage of C-Sharp is that because it was developed by Microsoft, the whole infrastructure of Azure, Microsoft's cloud platform, is optimized and highly integrated with C-Sharp. Last but not least, let's talk about the only lower level languages in this list, C and C++. Technically, they are not truly low level like assembly or machine code, but they are the lowest level languages on this list. It is more convenient to develop in languages like Python, JavaScript or C-Sharp, but with that convenience, we lose a bit of performance and control over the hardware. Here, C and C++ come into play and offer that higher performance that is sometimes needed. With C and C++, we can develop more efficient, faster, and more scalable applications. C and C++ are often mentioned together because C++ was developed as an extension of C, which added a lot of functionality and made it easier to develop. For many years, those two languages stayed very closely related and could even interchange certain parts of the language. Software developed with C and C++ includes operating systems, games, browsers, and embedded software where we need to control hardware. Everything that needs efficiency, the ability to scale, and where performance is very important. Now you're probably asking yourself, so what about all those languages? Which one is the best for my project? Here you can only get the most typical answer from every engineer. It depends. I now want to give you some questions you can ask to start conversations about the technologies used in your project. I've summarized a few questions that can help determine why someone is suggesting a specific technology for your project. You can, for example, ask, does the problem define the programming language? For some problems, there are not many choices. For example, if you want to develop an application that runs in the browser, you will probably choose JavaScript. How popular is the language? How long does it exist? Most cutting edge technologies are risky for your project as you don't know yet if there will be a big enough community, someone maintaining the language, or if you can find engineers for that in the future. Most of the time, it is better to pick the proven, but maybe more boring languages. Does the language align with your company's technology stack? If your company already uses certain technologies, it is often better to follow those decisions because you can get help from other engineers in the company quickly without them learning a completely new technology. Maintaining a unified environment is usually the responsibility of architects and the CTO. How quickly could we hire and or onboard people to the project? This is also a question about the popularity and of the complexity of the language. It is usually much easier to hire for simple and very popular languages than for niche languages like Fortran or Haskell. As you probably know, it is already hard enough to find good software engineers. Making it even harder can mean that your project fails or you have to rebuild it in another language. What are examples of other companies using this technology successfully on similar projects? This can indicate that a language is proven and famous for a certain project. Simple Google searches like companies building X with Y can indicate if the technology is a good choice for your project. I don't think you should make a decision without consulting experienced engineers, but I hope that those questions can start valuable conversations within your team. All those questions can obviously have exceptions, which is why we need software engineers who can help to make a decision here. 
The correct technology choice is one of the most important decisions at the beginning of each software project. It will be the foundation for the project's lifetime, as migrations to other technologies are usually very difficult. If you have more questions or sentences you don't understand, please comment them under this video and maybe I can answer them or make a future video about them. Thank you for watching until the end. If this video helped you, consider subscribing and you might want to take a look at the recent video I've made, where I talk about how the front end interacts with the back end and which role the API plays in computer systems.